Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar as we kick off the fiscal year 2021 CSPG annual reporting season. My name is Monique Acantera. I am a management and program analyst here within the Office of Community Services, Division of Community Assistance. As part of my role here in OCS, I help manage the performance management system, which includes the CSPG annual report. I'm joined today by Sharice Johnson, the, the Director of the Division of Community Assistance, and my colleague, Joey Lin, who is new to the team. She is a data analyst who will also be providing her expertise to the managing of the performance management system. Before we get started, I want to provide a few housekeeping rules. We have muted everyone upon entry and ask that everyone remains muted throughout the webinar. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A pod. We'll try to answer all questions at the end of the presentation. For any questions we are unable to answer, we'll provide additional guidance in future webinars. The chat function is also available, but we will primarily focus on answering questions submitted through the Q&A pod. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the OCS CSPG webinars page. During today's webinar, we will provide an overview of the annual report, review the reporting requirements. Please note these remain the same as last year go over the timelines and process, provide guidance about the new requirement to log in to grant solutions through login.gov, provide the upcoming webinar schedule and your OCS contacts, and lastly, but not least, we'll have some time for questions and answers. And with that, I'll pass it over to Sharice Johnson. Hello to our state administrators and your staff. On behalf of the Office of Community Services, our awesome director, Dr. Howard, and Deputy Director, Janelle George, and the entire DCA CSBG federal team, we welcome you to today's webinar, and we thank you for joining. It is so exciting to know we have more than 110 participants on the call today. Clearly, your attendance is a testament to your commitment to this important work. In addition, I would like to acknowledge and thank you for all the work you do to support communities hit by poverty and significantly impacted by the pandemic. We know your commitment to your state and eligible entities supports positive outcomes for families and, and communities impacted by poverty. To understand and adequately share the powerful work of the CSBG network, performance reporting is important and it is paramount to our story. To demonstrate our commitment, OCS has enhanced its focus on data management, data quality, data use, reporting, and sharing our data. And to, to support that work, um, we have actually expanded our performance management team for um, the Division of Community Assistance. And to focus that expanded work overall, all of the program offices and all of the programs in OCS work together in regards to annual reporting, data collection, because we know we need to tell a good story. But to support this important work in the Division of Community Assistance, Joey Lim, who you'll hear from later, has joined our team. Her subject matter expertise is data management, and she will serve as a data analyst in DCA. I would like for all of you all to please join me in welcoming Joey Lim um, to the CSBG network. As we move forward and think about um, um, annual report, I wanted today we're going to provide an overview. We're going to be offering a series of webinars to support annual reporting. We will announce the dates at the end of the session today. To launch the CSBG Annual Report Technical Assistance Series, today we're going to provide a general overview of the purpose and importance of CSBG Annual Reporting. We know that this is new information for new people to the network and it's actually a refresher for many others. And as adult learners, we know that repetition is good and supports excellence. So let's move forward in thinking about CSBG and CSBG port reporting a little bit more. The CSBG performance management system is designed to promote accountability, effective performance, quality improvement, data-driven decision-making, the deployment of training and technical assistance, and to strengthen the work of the network we all serve an important role in supporting the CSBG performance management system. In addition, we also know that it's a condition of the funding. As we look at the slide on the page that you're viewing now, you see that there are many components to our performance management system, and many of them start with you. 
um, through your community assessments, um, through the state plans that you send to us, um, individual outcomes that are set, the CSBG annual report, the report to Congress, and our CSBG performance management um, website um, that you'll hear more about um, in, in the future months. So I just wanna say we have a lot of pieces to our performance management system. All of you all today play a role in supporting the system and we need to work even closer together to make sure that we're telling our story, we're collecting strong data and we're holding ourselves as well as our eligible entities accountable for the work that they are designed to carry out every day. As we move forward, let's think about you know, what, what actually grounds this. Well, this is actually a part of the um, statute that governs the Community Services Block Grant. And one piece of that is around state accountability and reporting requirements. We know that this is a condition um, that is legislated also as a condition of this block grant. So as you can see, reporting is paramount to our work. All states, territories must report. And we need to make sure that the federal office is trying to make sure that we provide you with the guidance and support so that you can successfully um, give us the data that we need, use the data on a local level as well as the state level, level to carry out work. But we must meet this, alleg this legislative requirement. And we thank you, if you as you pay attention to some of the things that we will um, discuss today. So let's talk about the why. It may sound like we're being redundant, but it's very, very important to understand that the why actually talks about performance managed, actually talks about what is expected, what we're expected to do to submit an annual report for regular CSBG and the CSBG CARES and Disaster Supplemental Reports. And we know that that was a lift given the unique challenges of administering these funds, which have been particularly pronounced during the pandemic, OCAS wants to ensure that we think about how we collect information across these reports, and we're trying to figure out ways to make it as streamlined as important. Um, and it also to coordinate with you all and with all of our states and, and you coordinating with your eligible entities to make sure that we're getting the best information possible. We know this requires from service delivery planning to implementation and reporting to continuous quality improvement. That's the why. As we collect information, we're better able to plan. We meet our accountability responsibilities. We talk about our implementation strategies and best practices. And we have an opportunity to make sure that continuous improvement is a part of our, our thinking so that we can make sure we're providing the best services um, possible at a community level and that we're meeting the intended outcomes of the block grant. I do wanna say that we have provided quite a bit of tools. And so we want you to use the tools that we have created as a way through our dear colleague letters, through any information memorandum as a way to really understand the role that each state, um, each territory plays in the performance management um, system. And annual reporting is one of those. A couple of things to note, and one is is that the reporting system that we have in place, our performance management system requires all reports. We don't get to pick and choose which reports we want to um, um, submit or which models we want to submit. A complete submission includes the CSBG annual report for regular CSBG. It includes the annual report for CSBG CARES and also the CSBG disaster supplemental as, a, as um, applicable. Collectively, all of these three reports means that the state or the territory has, has submitted a full report for that reporting year. Just like we're getting ready to submit for 2021 on March 31st, all of those reports are expected to be um, submitted. I think the great thing is, is that the reporting requirements for 2021 um, reporting have not changed. So you'll be able to build off on what you learned last year and any kind of um, troubleshooting you've done over the last year. So you don't have to change anything, more than anything else that's enhanced on um, what you're sending, making sure that you're checking um, what you're sending um, because the reporting requirements have not changed. And so this will be just another year in which we're reporting um, on these three areas with the same information request. So first of all, we're gonna start with um, module one. And I know that I'm not gonna read what's on the slide, but I do wanna um, just make reference that 
all of the modules are, are very important. This particular module um, and table summarizes how states are expected to report for the annual report in regards to the CSBG Supplemental Annual Report and the CSBG Disaster Supplemental Annual Report for Module 1. As you recall, Module 1 provides key information on how funds were distributed across eligible entities and state assessments of a compliance with organizational standards. So I know a lot of work has gone um, on in regards to um, collecting this information for your eligible entities. I know that many of you have different approaches to doing that, but please know this is very important in regards to getting the key information um, that we need to know about the eligible entities as well as their compliance with organizational standards. When we move over to module two, um, no changes as we mentioned before, but the module is a way to communicate information on how resources were allocated for each eligible entity. And I'm sure you know that financial uh, management and integrity are a huge part of the work we do in meeting our compliance requirements. And so this is a very important section in regards to how was the money utilized, how was the food funding utilized and allocated to support the work, important work that goes on in communities. Moving to slide three, module three is an opportunity to provide good information on initiatives and actions that you've taken, the communities have taken at a community level to facilitate change. But we've not been able to communicate back with you on all of the successes of module three. We know that there's a lot of important information that goes into module three. We hope in the future that we'll be able to provide more feedback and highlight a lot of the things going on in module three. But you please use this as an opportunity to tell your story, to give an example of a special project that you're implementing, and also how that work is going to change um, and transform communities. So don't shy away from that, but just report out on it. And as we enhance our data collection assessment and analysis, we're going to be able to share with you what we're learning um, from those submissions. Quickly to module four. Module four provides more granular data at the individual and family level and answers key questions of who CSBG eligible entities are serving. I'm sure you know that demographic data, often we get requests from Congress and um, sometimes we have to tell the story of who we're serving. And so that information is really, really important. And we ask that you submit that with the same type of fidelity that you're doing with the other uh, modules that we've mentioned here today. Um, and any other services provided also are captured on uh, population served um, in module four. Everything that I've discussed today is really a refresher. We ask you to use the resources that have been provided to remind yourselves of what um, the reporting um, expectations are. And if you are new to the network or a new state administrator, we ask that you read the information that we've provided. Reach out to us if you have questions, because our objective is to make sure that we provide you with the best support information so that reporting is successful. We have enhanced reliability in our reports and we're able to tell all the great, to talk about and tell the story about all the great work we do in um, the CSBG network. And at this time, I'm gonna transfer this over to Monique Alcatera, who's gonna talk about the timelines, Monique. Monique, you're on mute. Thank you. So as Sharice noted, um, the process has not changed from last year. We are following the same process in that we have the SMART form release, role DC availability, the annual report submission, a quality assurance review, the federal review, the review memo process, response, I'm sorry, acceptance, the annual report final submission, and then finalization. And as we go through this process, we'll be doing additional webinars and giving additional guidance to go through the other pieces. But I did wanna focus just on the first three parts today, which is a smart form release, ODC availability, and the annual report submission. Currently, we are in the process of releasing smart forms. All states that have submitted their complete CSPG annual reporting report, including their CARES and disaster supplemental reports, should have received their smart forms last Friday, January 21st. I'll be reaching out to states that have not received their smart forms this week to discuss next steps, including finalizing their fiscal year 2020 submission. We are finalizing the opening of OLDC and this should be available next week. We will release a DCL upon its official opening. 
And lastly, your complete CSVG annual reports are due March 31st, 2022. While OCS is not providing an extension this year, we will be offering to support to everyone to help meet this due date. Now I'd like to go over logging the new Grant Solutions login. As many of you know, Grant Solutions has switched how you can log in. And this is to ensure that there's two-factor authentic authentication when logging into grantsolutions.gov. This change was implemented on January 10th, and we provided information about this originally in our CSPG DCL 2022-12. So this information can be found in that DCL, which is available on our website. So if you are logging into Grant Solutions, you have to use login.gov now, right now. If you do not have a login.gov account, we ask that you request that you create a login.gov account, and then you link your OLDC account to that login.gov account. New users must still request the OLDC access by sending an email to myself and Nikki. If you already have a login.gov account, then you just need to link your account from grantsolutions.gov. So we will walk through how to um, do that in the next few slides. And again, uh, one other thing to note on this is that the login.gov email address must match the email that you have for grantsolutions.gov. So if it's a different email, you're not going to be able to link it. So that would either mean that you have to request new OLDC access or create a login.gov using your work email address. So step one, you would log into login.gov, your account. Again, you must be using the same email address associated with your Grant Solutions account. And we only say to do this step first because if you already log in, it just makes the rest of the linking process easier. And make sure that you're doing it from the same browser that you are logging into OLDC or Grant Solutions. Next, you'll sign into your grantsolutions.gov account. By clicking the login.gov for recipients and grantors button, which is located to the right of where you used to enter your username and password. Again, do not enter in your username and password anymore. You'll just click this button to the left of it. Next, I'll ask you if it's your first time to verify that the information is correct and click agree and continue. So you wanna make sure it's saying we'll share this information with Grant Solutions that it's the correct email address for your grant solutions and login.gov account. Again, if you're already logged in, it's gonna take you directly to here. If you're not logged into login.gov, you are going to first have to log into your login.gov account. Click agree and continue. And then this will direct you back to OLDC and you'll know that your accounts have been linked. There is a way to go into manage your account to see those login accounts. And if you need that information, please feel free to reach out to myself and Nikki. Now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Joey, to talk about upcoming webinars and your OCS contacts. Thanks so much, Monique. Um, could we go to the next slide, please? So this is a table that lists each of the upcoming webinars that are scheduled in our series on fiscal year 2021 CSBG annual reporting. These sessions are going to cover each of the modules in greater detail and will include information on things like submission requirements, frequently asked questions, and technical support for using OLDC and smart forms. Webinar announcements for these sessions will be coming your way, so please do be on the lookout. Um, on this table in particular, I do want to draw your attention to two webinars that are scheduled for next week. Uh, next Tuesday, February 1, OCS will be providing information on submitting module one for CSBG CARES, and CSBG Disaster Annual Reports. OCS will also be answering frequently asked questions related to Module 1. That same week on February 2, OCS will provide a similar overview, but this time for Modules 2 and 4. Please note here that there was a date change. Original, originally, this webinar was scheduled for February 3 in the Action Transmittal. Next slide, please. All of the information on these webinars in the table from the previous slide can be found online on the Office of Community Services CSBG webinar page, and you can see a screenshot here. This web page will include information like webinar announcements, pre-registration links, as well as webinar recordings and PowerPoint slides from each of the sessions. So you'll have that handy for reference. Next slide, please. 
And if you do have any questions, you can contact the OCS program specialist assigned to your region. The names, emails, and phone numbers of your program specialists are shown here on the slide. And when reaching out, we do ask that if you correspond over email, that you copy CSBG states at acf.hhs.gov in those emails. Next slide, please. And finally, as Monique mentioned, um, if you do have technical assistance questions related to OLDC, then please send them over to both Monique and Nikki Fraser curry Their contact information is here on this screen. And similarly, if you correspond via email, we ask that you also copy CSBG states at acf.hhs.gov. Next slide, please. So that wraps up the presentation portion of this webinar, and we're now going to be moving on to the Q&A. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the questions that came through in the Q&A pod, and we do ask for incoming questions to please direct those there just for ease of facilitation. Um, and just as a reminder, you all were muted upon entry, so please do stay muted throughout the webinar. Um, great, let me go ahead and move into some of these questions for you, Monique and Sharice. Um, the first question, for Module 2 and Module 4 for the regular CSBG annual report, is it similar to Module 1 in that it includes all funding sources, CARES, and disaster? Sure, I'll answer that question. Yes, Modules 2 and 4 are uh, similar to the regular CSBG annual report. Um, and so all funding sources, including CARES and disasters, should be included in your regular CSBG annual report for modules two and four as well. Thank you, Monique. Um, related to technical assistance, someone asked if we are having issues with linking our login.gov account with Grant Solutions, should we reach out to OCS or the tech support on login.gov or Grant Solutions for assistance? Um, so you could first reach out to us about it and if we can guide you through the process we'll try we are going to ask that you set up a actual meeting for us because we will want to see your screen so that we can better guide you through that process um or once you send us an email letting us know that you're having issues we'll set up that meeting and if we're not able to help we'll make sure that we get you the best person to contact in order to help you link those accounts great thank you monique um, there was a question about whether slides from these webinars will be shared as this person cannot attend some of these dates. I can answer that and say that yes, they will be shared. They'll be available on the CSBG webinar website. Um, someone also asked whether we could put the link to the webinar schedule in the chat. I think we can link to the webinar website um, where, where you'll have that information available. Um, Great. And there's a question here. Can you provide any general guidance or tips on separating out CARES from regular annual report numbers? Um, this person is thinking specifically for Module 4, Section C characteristics. So I will try my best to answer this question. We'll also make sure that we go into more detail in our February 3rd webinar. Um, the short answer is yes, you can use a percentage. But as specific as you can, the more specific you can be, the better. Um, but I again, we'll make sure that we go into detail into this question on our February 3rd webinar. Great. Thank you. Sorry, um, February 2nd. Thank you, Monique. Um, there is a question here. Are CAAs only reporting services in the Module 4 CARE Supplemental Report again this year? Yes. Uh, for modules for CARES and modules for disaster, CAAs are only reporting services, which is also known as Section B of those modules. Thank you. Um, will there be another extension for CARES expenditures? As you know, the states are struggling to spend the CARES CSBG funds, and now the funds must be expended by September 30, 2022. Um, at, this, at this point, we don't have any indications that uh, funding extensions will be provided. And um, if we will take this back and if we hear that there are opportunities for that, we can say that we've had at least one question from the network. Um, um, but however, I think it's highly unlikely that it will be extended. I do wanna say some states received funds in 2021 
and their funds expire um, in 2023. Great, thank you, Sharice. Um, there's a question here. When will the registration links be opened for the other webinars? Uh, thank you. So the registration links are actually available. We'll be adding them to our OCS webinar webpage. I believe my colleague Nikki is adding that link to the chat as we speak. Um, so please expect those to be available no later than the end of this week um, and sooner if we're able to get that done. But they are open, so we'll just be uh, releasing those registration links. We'll also issue a DCL officially announcing all the webinars, and then you'll receive different notifications for each webinar, um, just to make sure that we're making everyone aware of all these webinars. Thank you, Monique. Um, there's a question here that popped up in the chat and also in the Q&A. Is module three optional this year? Yes, module three is optional, but I was pushing it hard because it tells the story um, of some of the work that goes on across the network, but it is optional. Thank you. Next question, are CAAs to report on all activities for all that they do, or do they only report for the service district they receive CSDG funds for? Let's say an agency serves 10 counties for certain programs, but only serves two counties under CSDG. Do they report for two counties, or do they do all 10? So, <laughs> so again, we'll make sure that we answer this more explicitly in the February 2nd webinar. But the short answer is that for regular CSPG, you should report on all services that you do. Um, so that would be all 10 counties. For CARES and, and disaster as applicable, we're asking that you only report specifically on the CSPG CARES money or the CSPG uh, disaster supplemental money. So um, for those you would, and using this example, you would only um, discuss those two. But again, we'll go over this more explicitly during our February 2nd webinar. Thank you, Monique. There's a question here. Is a smart forms refresher webinar open to CAAs? While the webinars are primarily focused for the states, we will look to open up that particular webinar to the CAAs. Um, we'll have to speak to our colleagues to make sure that there's enough room available for everyone to join that webinar. Thank you. Next question is, should CARE supplemental funds be obligated or liquidated by September 30, 2022? I'm sure as a part of the um, overall grants policy and managing your budgets, um, when the year ends, if it's on 9.30 um, of the year, you have 90 days to liquidate um, all of your funding is the um, expectation. And if that is not clear, we ask that you reach out to the Office of Grants Management for additional assistance. On your notice of awards, you have a grants management specialist who can explain that to you in more detail in regards to your um, liquidation activities. Great, thank you, Sharice. Um, related to that as a follow-up, is there an action transmittal or dear colleague letter that states can reference for this requirement? Yes, I just pulled it up to make sure we gave the right number. <laughs> it's CSPG DCL 2021-30. Um, we'll try to link that in the chat as well to point you um, towards that information. Thank you. Uh, next question, do small states who receive their CARES funds late have until the end of September or until the end of 2022? This person just heard about the 2023 deadline that is for small states um, you and that small, was for September. If you're a small state and you received your, your second, the second portion of your CARES funding, um, it expires on 929, I mean 930, 2023. Thank you, Sherry. I would just recommend that uh, you refer to your notice of award um, for additional clarity on that, um, um, as well as any DCOs that we sent out in regards to obligation and liquidation dates of CARES funding. Thank you. Um, this person would like to confirm um, for states who received CARES and two allotments, is the second one still to be expended by September 2023? Yes. Thank you. Um, this next question, 
if an agency generated SNPI outcomes with CARES or DRSF funds, should those outcomes be reported in the CSBG annual report, even if they are not reporting them in the CARES or DRSF annual reports? Um, should those outcomes be? Yes. If an agency, gen I'm, I just want to make sure I'm understanding the question. If an agency generated. While Monique is um, processing that question, I do want to say when we're talking about um, spending out, there's an administrative piece and then there's what the eligible entities spend. The questions that, you, that, that I responded to were regarding to um, the funding for the eligible entities and not necessarily the administrative cost um, for states to administer program. The Institute for, and I think the person who put the comment in the chat um, um, focused on that. And so I just want to make sure everyone pays attention. There is a difference sometimes between the administrative um, end period, project period, as well as against the eligible entity spending out. Could be a distinction there. Thanks, Therese. Okay, sorry about that. So um, just for everyone's awareness for, staff, uh, for states that are new or staff that's new, the generated FNPI outcomes, that is section A of module four, and these are outcomes or um, family and individual national performance indicators. And for CARES and disaster, we do not require that you report on those, only on services, which is section B. However, Though we're not asking you to report for them specifically for CARES and disaster, we are asking that you do include them in your regular CSPG annual report. So thanks for asking that question, James. I think it was a great question and, and hopefully provides clarity to everyone. Thank you, Monique and Sharice. I'm just scanning the chat to see if there are any other outstanding questions. There is one um, that applied to an answer, a question that was answered earlier. Um, if a state hasn't received their SMART forms, uh, when, they can, when can they expect to receive them? And, uh, we will be reaching out directly to those states that haven't received them yet um, and give you either your next steps or your expectation of when you should receive them. Thank you, Monique. Um, it looks like there's just one last question. Um, is it correct that there's no Section C in Module 4 for CARES annual report? Yes, that is correct. So for CARES and the disaster annual report, only Section B is required, which is focused on services. We are not requesting characteristics or outcome level data for Module 4 CARES and disaster, um, but you should still report that in your regular CSPG annual report. Thank you, Monique. Um, I'm just looking through. It looks as though we've addressed all of the questions that have come through. Oh, um, someone asked, Monique, if you could provide your email address. Um, yes, they're also included in the slides and um, I'm sure she could also type them up in the chat. Um, and then someone else is asking, are you saying that if you receive the CARES CSBG funds late due to C, uh, due due to CR, you will have until 2023? No. What we're saying is, if you received your CARES Act funding into, I'm going to use the word installments. You received some in 20, and you received the remaining portion in 2021. You have until 2023 to liquidate that second um, um, installment of, of funding. And the continuing resolution um, does not impact that at all. Thank you, Sharice. Great. So, I'm going to give it. We, like 15. Do you have any more? I don't think that I do. I was going to give it a few to see if there are other questions that came, but I think we can go back to them if they pop up. In the, oh, there's one that came up. Um, if the continuing resolution does not impact, uh, does that, oh, I can't, I don't know how to read. I can, I can, I can answer that question. You're talking about the federal, the federal poverty guidelines. Funding is on one side, the extension of the 200% um, is another piece of what was a part of continuing resolution. Um, when I responded to the question, it was in regard to not, it, the question was around, do you still have additional time to spend out the money? The continuing resolution and the spending of the funding are two different things. 
but the poverty guidelines and then you, you know were extended I think it's February 18th if I'm not mistaken I may have that date wrong continual resolution will allow us to maintain that for CARES funding hope we get a full budget soon um, but if not um, we'll follow the continual resolution and all of the um, conditions of provisions um, as we move forward and keep you informed. Great, thank you. All um, right. Thank you. I think oh. about it, right? <laughs> Every time I say I want to close out. <laughs> Someone asked one more question. Any update on the extension of the 200%? No, it's no, we don't have any additional information other than what you have um, available to you. Um, we know that has been very important um, to the CSBG network because we know families are struggling, especially as a result of the pandemic. Um, but as we learn additional information, we will share it with you. And we ask that, like it's obviously that you're doing, that you refile, you follow the legislation as well in regards to continuing resolution. Um, but as soon as we find out Anything new, we will share it with the network because we know it's important for you to get information. And we know it's important for us to work to make sure we serve families um, that are in most need. So very good question, but we don't have any updates on that. Thank you, Sherry. All right, I'm gonna Thank wait you. a little bit to see. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Thank so, you. If you have any additional questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us, um, to your program specialists, myself, uh, Sharice, we're always here to answer any questions that you guys have. And we'll also use that information to inform future webinars. So do not be shy about asking any questions that you have. Um, one other thing we want to provide is the fiscal year 2020 CSPG annual report status. It's currently under the federal review process. So if you remember that diagram I showed earlier today, um, that is the portion that we're in for the fiscal year 2020 CSPG annual reports. Um, please expect your module two and four review memos by the end of February. And we will be doing a webinar to go over those review memos on February 23rd, 2022. So we will be provide the uh, registration link for that fairly, fairly soon as well. And with that, I'll hand it to Sharice to close this out. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, DCA team, um, Monique and Joey. Um, I wanna say, um, first of all, we hope this webinar was meaningful and helpful. Um, we also wanna make sure that you continues to continue to provide us feedback so that we can continue to improve um, how we communicate. And we also want to, or I wanna reiterate that reporting is so important and we want to provide you with the technical assistance that you need to be successful in reporting, because when you're successful, we're, we're successful in telling the story and meeting the provisions of the block grant. Uh, we want to make sure that you um, understand that we um, aim to post everything we do online so that you can refer back to it later and that we're available, um, even if it's through office hours or if you request a meeting to provide you su to, su to support your success. Because we know if you have the information that you need, that will definitely make a difference in how our reports um, are, are received. And we know that we also know that quality of reporting, the quality of the data, the timeliness of, of receiving the reports is paramount to the overall performance management system. So thank you for your time. Um, thank, you for, thank you for your commitment to this work. We're in it together. Everybody has a role. And we hope that we can support you um, as you support your communities. Thank you so much. And that ends this webinar.